I will hold on a second while it connects. Um, so this is the IETF uh, Newcomers Overview. Um, as Rich already indicated, I'm my Karen Donahue, and this is Rich Sauls. And we're going to be uh, providing an overview for this evening. Um, and with that, uh, we represent the um, IETF Edu team. Uh, there'll be some information about it at the very end. Um, but feel free to reach out to us at any point with any questions. Um, and with that, uh, Rich, I'll give it to you. Sure. OK, so welcome. Uh, they say start off with a joke, so I'll start with a joke. Uh, for those in the US or watching the results, this will not, we will keep this seminar as a safe space. And in spite of our desire to avoid it, we will not run until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we'll finish on time, we'll help room for questions, um, and then we can all get back to biting our nails. Um, so as Karen mentioned, <coughs> um, she and I are part of the EDU team, actually we're the co-chairs, I guess. Um, that is one of the groups within the IETF that works to provide these kinds of educational offerings. We also provide other newcomers activities that are mentioned in the webpage. Everyone should have gotten an email. If you didn't, let us know by clicking something in the chat room, typing something in the chat room. Um, all of the slides are available off the newcomers page, uh, which will show up in the chat room. It should also be in the email you got. Um, and all of the, when you see the hard copy, the PDF, all of the links on there will be live. We checked them out earlier today. So everything points to the right stuff. So uh, welcome. Uh, first, I just, the first definition, you know, a newcomer uh, in the ITF terminology is someone who's attended up to five meetings. Uh, we meet three times a year. So that means you can, if you so choose, identify you know, as a newcomer for the first two years of your involvement. Uh, a first timer is obviously someone who this is their first time. Okay, so let's get into it. Welcome. Uh, we will be, uh, this presentation will cover three sections, uh, introduction to newcomers activities, the IETF structure, uh, the I, what the IETF week is like, Obviously, with the virus, it's all online and virtual, so it's different than some of the face-to-face -face things we have. Um, and then we'll finish with pointing out some of the key people and resources that are available to you if you get lost or confused or um, are har harassed or bothered. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, we'll end each section with a chance to ask questions. Uh, do that by saying, you know, plus, plus or hands up in the chat. Um, don't click raise hand in the participant list because that's harder to see. We have to scroll through it. But whoever's not talking right now, it would be Karen. When she presents, it would be me. We'll keep an eye open on the chat room and then, you know, name you and then you can sort of unmute and, you know, ask your question or type it into the chat room if you prefer. Uh, this newcomer's presentation has been part of the history of the ITF for a very, very long time. Um, Scott Bradner and Mike St. John's are two uh, graybeards, as we call them. Uh, Scott's since retired, Mike is still around, um, who have done the earlier versions of this thing and presented it for a very long time. So, uh, page three, the note well. Um, so, because we're a standards organization in SDO, um, we have to have certain policies. Um, and so this and the next slide talk about what the legal impacts or the legal ramifications are of your participation. Um, by the time you're at the end of the note well, you at the end, sorry, by the time you're at the end of the week, the chairs will just be saying, okay, here's the note well, you've seen it before, any questions, good, move on. Um, there are, uh, you don't have to read this now, it's what we call an eye, eye chart slide, a lot of very small print. Um, but it talks about what rights um, are involved if you participate, meaning um, you can't keep patent information secret. You have to respect the participants who are involved. Karen, if you go on to the next slide, please. Um, this is the number of documents. It talks about 
um, how, this, how the standards work, the flow through the ITF, um, how the working group works. So the working group is, there's like 130 of them, is how the work, the real work gets done, which is preparing documents. Um, Anti-harassment procedures, uh, code of conduct, copyright. When you write a draft, you are turning over the copyright um, to the IETF corporation. Um, and there's <clears throat> certain rights that you maintain, but certain rights you also give up uh, when you participate and a privacy policy and so on. Um, all of these links are live. Um, the note well itself uh, is on the IETF website fairly prominently. Um, and then from there, you can click and read all of the other things um, should you need to, or you should at least feel free to do so. Um, if you haven't done it yet, on the bottom of the Zoom window, there's a little chat button with a, with a speech balloon. Uh, pop that open if you can and move it off to the side so you can ask questions there as Karen is monitoring that right now. Uh, next slide. So we have a lot of uh, newcomer activities or things designed to orientate, orient uh, newcomers and make the, the week that's coming up uh, in mid-November uh, useful and productive for you and therefore the ITF. So this is the first of two webinars we're giving. Um, the next one, 18 hours from now, no, 36 hours from now, um, is uh, it's the same as this. We'll just be switching speaking positions. So if you come here and you don't have questions and you don't have to come to the next one. Um, there is a virtual quick connections. Uh, this will be held in one of the social rooms online, virtual. And we'll show you some slides of that, um, where you just, a group of people, you go from table to table and there are experienced IETF people in a number of areas, security, transportation, uh, routing, the domain system, and they can there to answer your questions. And it's kind of like a speed dating thing. Uh, 10 minutes, move to the next table. Uh, so it's mainly about making, getting recommendations for contacts and uh, connecting, you know, names with faces if possible, <laughs> virtually. Uh, the coffee breaks um, are in the morning uh, before the sessions start. And that will be in the same place as the quick connections. Um, and it's just a social, social gathering talk, meet other people who have been here the first time uh, or are newcomers or first timers um, can make some good friends that way. There'll also be experienced people around to answer questions and so on. Um, the guides mentoring uh, has signups going on now uh, so that <clears throat> um, there's somebody who commits to being available to you all week during the ITF meetings. And so you can message them, chat with them, email um, and so on. One of the, all of the information and there's a, a full page write up is on the newcomers page that's listed there at the top of the slide. Um, okay. Um, one of the, the, yeah, okay, I'll come back to that later. So, so sorry. <laughs> um, next slide, please. So how to prepare for an IETF meeting. Um, see the link. So this information is stuff that's designed to be immediately available and useful to you. Um, we don't cover at all the history. We don't cover how to write standards. We don't cover how to, um, you know, say, oh, I want to do this new topic of work, right? It's just like, here's the groups that are meeting um, and here's how to get in into all of them. Um, and here's how to start participating, you know, hit the ground running as the phrase goes. So you don't have to sort of look around and then say, oh yeah, you know, I know something about network routing or I know something about how DNS operates. I wanna be able to participate in these things. And this is very, very much a pragmatic orientation for that. Um, do we have any questions at this point? Um, the, we, we have one that says, how long do these sessions go? And uh, it, it, one hour. Yeah, the, the this, uh, if you mean this session being the tutorial, that's an hour. We try to leave, you know, 10, 15 minutes at the end for questions. The working group sessions 
have different time slots and the chairs have picked, you know, if they want to meet for 60 minutes, they want to meet for 90 minutes um, or two hours, um, which is, yeah, the, uh, different by the working group, but this session is an hour. Okay, next slide. Um, so now I'll give a brief talk about where the IETF fits into the organization, the, the whole ecosystem that's around the IETF. So next slide, please. Um, okay, so our mission. Um, I'll read this out loud. The mission of the IETF is to make the internet work better by providing high quality, relevant technical documents that influence the way people design, use, and manage the internet. Now, one phrase you hear a lot is we're not the protocol police, as in if you do something that doesn't meet, you know, the HTTP 1.1 spec, there's nothing we're going to do about it. You know, we're not going to come and turn off your router. Um, but the purpose of all of the of what we write is, and it goes back to the very first definition, the very original definition of RFC, which is request for comments. Um, if you want to work with the other people on the internet in this area, then these are the guidelines for how you should do it. Um, and the standards language has phrases like you must do this, or you should do this, or you should not do that. Um, but it's up to the individual installations, software developers, and so on uh, to write things. Uh, we want to develop things that are useful, um, that they, that, that's functional. It can uh, do what it's needed. Um, it's scalable. We want to, you know, the phrase deploy at scale, right? The, the internet, uh, we're developing standards here that run over the whole internet and through the whole internet. So scalability is very definitely important. Security um, in the past few years has become more important to the IETF. Um, so we see things like end-to-end -end encryption, uh, TLS encrypting more and more data, uh, time is important. You don't want to be able to send someone's clock back in the past and replay old messages. So that's got more security and so on. Um, and then there's a lot, many working groups on operate, devoted to operational issues. Um, the domain system is complicated and getting that properly deployed and operating, there are hints for how to do stuff. Uh, okay, next slide, please. So what is the IETF? We are a standards development organization, SDO. Uh, other ones you might have heard of are W3C, OASIS, ANSI, uh, ECMA, ETSI, ITU is another big global one. Um, we're different from almost all of those. Um, the way you join an IETF working group is you sign up for the mailing list. Um, if it's one of the more recent working groups, you can just follow the repo on GitHub, for example, and get comments that way. There's no formal government role. There's no formal voting. We don't, and if we were doing this face-to-face, -face, I'd, I'd run a sample one at the end of the meeting, but we hum. And how we hum virtually is we're trying to work out the details, but humming has the advantage. And of course, there's an RFC on it. Um, you can't tell who's humming. You can't look at a raised hand and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna vote like he did because we're both in the same company. Um, and you can't tell who's humming yes or who's humming no, it's very difficult. Uh, it's driven by market-based adoption, meaning uh, a standard is only useful if it's used. Okay, um, if it's somebody, we tried to look at if we should develop a standard for internet file systems and came the, after one meeting, we said, nope, because nobody's interested in working with us on it. So we have, you know, Dropbox and all of the other companies are all doing their own thing. Uh, bottom up means the people who, the individuals who are on the working group and are writing the documents, that's, the product, <laughs> and that's why we're we say we're bottom up. Uh, next slide, please. So, the ITF is has divided itself into what's currently seven, right? Seven, 
seven technical areas. And I won't read this eye chart. They have shifted around over time. We've created new areas. Um, we have um, made merge some into others and so on. So they, it's a malleable structure. Um, every area uh, has two or three area directors. Um, the bottom one, gen, is general, and that's devoted to the IETF itself. So that's where we have RFCs and working groups discussing how we pick venues for meeting, um, how we decide who can be on the nominating committee and so on. And that's just run by one person, the general chair. Uh, sorry, the IETF chair uh, is the area director for GEN. But all of the others have two or three people who have got, you know, for the most part, years of knowledge on these things. Okay. Uh, next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about humming and consensus. Um, <coughs> pardon me. So the IETF really likes this phrase. It came from Dave Clark, uh, a research professor at MIT, uh, very much involved in the early days of the ARPANET and its follow on the internet. Uh, we reject King's presidents in voting, um, meaning it's consensus. Um, and we believe in rough consensus and running code. In other words, nobody's ahead of anybody else. Uh, something that can be deployed has a big advantage. Rough consensus is interesting. It doesn't mean we all agree, and it doesn't mean that we've necessarily compromised, but it means that all of the points were raised. And if somebody says, well, this is bad because of ABC, the working group can decide, well, that's a, yeah, we see your point, your point, but we disagree with you. So it doesn't have to be that everything was addressed and it doesn't have to mean that everybody has compromised. Uh, it just means that all the concerns have been heard, not necessarily accommodated, but heard. Um, and that's very different from say, the ones I'm familiar with ANSI and ITU, right? which is very much, um, you know, you, you, you'll have voting and you'll have to make sure to, you know, make the standards more flexible or oasis, I guess, so that everybody will, uh, you know, vote yes. Okay, um, humming, uh, it's a way to get the temperature of the room. It's anonymous. Nobody raises their hand, as I mentioned before. And it's up to the working group chairs um, who will be sit, you know, either are the owners of the video presentation or in face-to-face -face or sitting at the front of the room to listen with the help of their area director and determine which way the consensus goes. Um, the RFC mentioned there, 7282, it's you know interesting and fun to read. Um, if you just typed IETF RFC 7282 into you know Bing, Google, what, duck, duck, go, whatever, um, it'll come up. One of the first couple links that will come up will be a copy of it. Um, and the official links uh, to the formal documents, which are the same as what you'll find on the net, are available in the slides. Uh, Okay, one more. Let's go on to the next one. Um, the next one beyond this one, because you've been talking about this already. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the alphabet soup, this is sort of where the pieces that make up the IETF. Um, the IESG, and I'll talk about more of this on the next slide. Um, that's the, all the area directors, I mentioned a couple slides ago, each area has two or three directors to collect collectively. They're the IESG, and you can see that blue circle on the right-hand side divided to the, in the areas, and working groups are all within an area. And the working groups have a charter, and they are chartered to work on a particular technology, HTTP, network time, um, the border gateway protocol. You know, things like that. The IRTF, um, which is shown on the pink circle on the right there, um, although it's, yeah, IRSG, um, is the same kind of thing, but not producing documents that, or standards that affect the operation of the internet. They're looking a little further out. Um, it follows all of the same rules and structures and so on 
it's separate but the same kind of thing. And it meets the same time the IETF does. Um, the IIB takes a longer term role. Um, the LLC, I'll mention that's a, a business corporation, the kind of corporation in the US. Um, the RFC editor in green produces our documents and IANA handles some of the, the number, the paper pushing. Um, so let's look on the next slide. We'll get into a little more detail about who does what. So as I said, the ISG, um, all the area directors meet, they get a last chance to review anything that would be published. Um, they often have feedback and that goes back to the working group or the document authors. <laughs> they can you know, block something, say a discuss, meaning, hey, I didn't understand what you meant by this. You should clear, clarify this. So it's a really useful um, last minute review <coughs> um, by folks who might have a wider um, view horizon. The RTF I mentioned is a parallel structure. The IAB provides oversight, um, longer term things. They run programs such as the RFC editor. So um, the ISG is focused on technical and when organizing the meetings in person. Um, and the IAB handles longer scale things. The LLC, uh, Limited Liability Corporation, it's a US construct, legal construct, um, it's the legal home. Um, so when somebody has to sign uh, a contract with a hotel, you know, saying, oh yeah, we're gonna, you know, please reserve a thousand rooms for us. You know, you need somebody who, a legal entity to sign that. Um, taking donations, things like that. It's a, it's a charitable organization, so tax deductible. Um, okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, so uh, just looking at the chat before we go on to the next section. Um, yeah, let's just see. Uh, so how do you remember most or all of the RFCs? I don't know anybody who does. Um, people will remember the ones that are in um, their area or things that they're interested in. Many people know particular ones um, that uh, affect the op define the operations of the IETF. But I mean, I've been around for you know too many years, um, and I'll come to a meeting, and all of a sudden, someone will stand up and go, "Well, you know, as we said in RFC twenty six twelve, blah blah blah." I'm like, "How do you even remember those numbers? You just don't, you know." And then people are often you know sitting there typing at their laptop RFC twenty six twelve and calling it up and go, "Oh yeah, that's the one that def defines may, must, should, shall." Um, but there are many people, and, and there's a joke we can talk about some other time about that, you know. Um, don't remember all the RFCs. You have to, and often an RFC will say, "Oh, this updates a previous one," or "This obsoletes a whole bunch." of other ones, so you only have to care about, you know, the latest one. Uh, I'm about to turn it over to Karen. So just wanted any other questions on this section? Um, I think we've been catching them as we go. Um, Great. There is um, some discussion in here about um, rough consensus, but we, we've talked about it some, so I think we can get back to it at the end if there's any more questions, so. Sure. All right, uh, so I'm gonna talk about um, basically what, uh, what all the various pieces are that happen during an actual IETF week. Um, and, um, and, and to understand this, gen this is what often goes on in person and then there's gonna be some variations on that because we are uh, currently in a virtual environment. Um, so basically, uh, the organized events during the agenda would be uh, your working group sessions. Um, we have approximately 130 working groups, and some subset of those will be meeting uh, during the main IETF week. Um, we also have birds of a feather sessions, which are uh, focused on specific um, uh, you know, bringing new work to the IETF or one-time topics. I'll talk a little bit more about those later. Um, we have a number of IRTF sessions, and uh, there's a little bit of discussion in the chat about that. 
Um, so we have the I, IETF, which is the engineering task force, and then we have the IRTF, which is the research task force. So this is for, um, as Rich indicated, this is for work that's not quite mature enough yet to, to develop deployable standards on it. Um, but there are a number of groups, but they are working through proposals and publishing documents. Um, and the research groups um, are generally speaking open and they, some subset of them will also meet during an IETF week. Uh, and then there's uh, area-wide sessions. So uh, Rich mentioned that the areas, you know, you had like the security area, the transport area. So sometimes you'll have meetings that are across a single area. Uh, and then you might have uh, the IETF wide plenaries or invited lunch talks or things like that, which are uh, across all of the areas or the whole IETF. There's also generally a hackathon and a code sprint. I'll talk a little bit more about those. Um, there's usually social events um, and then there'll be some tutorials or deep dives. Uh, sometimes there is uh, something called the hot RFC lightning talks. Uh, and then there's also side meetings and open time. And so we'll talk about each of these in a little bit more detail. Um, uh, there's a number of things that generally are not on the agenda, including your hallway meetings, um, bar boffs, which are basically really informal meetings where you're getting your colleagues together uh, to start work potentially, you know, that will eventually turn into a real boff, uh, and then editing sessions. Uh, there is an app, and even with the virtual, um, environment that we're currently in, the app has been updated for uh, this IETF. Uh, and then finally, the, the data tracker uh, is, is sort of the, it's really the repository of all the IETF documents and all the work. And so you really want to um, uh, uh, pay attention to the agenda. I see the question in the thing about IRTF sessions, um, and they are also part of the IETF agenda page, and, and you'll be able to identify them on the data tracker as being an IRTF session versus an IETF session, but they will be all on the same agenda page. Um, so IETF 109, which is one coming up here in a couple of weeks, um, is going to be all online. Um, and there'll be a few activities the week before, but the, the bulk of the IETF will be the 16th through the 20th of November. Um, the newcomer overview, and this is one of those, uh, and also some Meet Echo training sessions are being held this week. So Meet Echo is the tool that we use. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. That's the tool that we use for the meeting itself, the virtual meeting. Um, and there are some training sessions for participants um, and that'll be on the participants guide. Um, I believe they have been scheduled at this point, um, but keep an eye out for those. Uh, there is a hackathon and it's going to be the week before the IETF uh, and those, there's some more information about that later on. Um, and so that's actually next week. Um, and then there's newcomers quick connection, which is going to be the week before as well. Um, we made the decision early on to um, when we moved to virtual meetings to keep the rough time uh, frame. Uh, uh, with what it would have been when the, where the meeting was originally hosted. So this meeting was originally planned for Bangkok and um, Thailand. And therefore um, it's going to be during hours that would be like normal working hours for Thailand. So it's um, going to be 0500 to 1100 UTC. Um, as I already mentioned, all of the uh, session information will be linked from the agenda page. Uh, there are informal side meetings, which are not on the agenda page, and it's on the side meetings. Anybody can request, can go into the wiki and edit it and, and uh, schedule a side meeting. Uh, and then you can, you're free to announce it on whatever mailing list um, makes sense. So if, you know, if you want to have a side meeting, for example, um, in, um, uh, you know, a side meeting on, you know, next generation NTP security, you could go in. Uh, and you could schedule that. And then you'd probably want to announce that one on the NTP mailing list and say, you know, hey, I'm gonna have a side meeting, come join me. And here's the details for that. Um, all of the information on how to partic participate is here. And this session participant guide is where you will find um, the links for the Meet Echo uh, training sessions that'll be held. And then we've already talked a little bit about this, this is your newcomer specific activities. So 
the bulk of the IETF is obviously all the working groups. Um, most of the work in a working group is done on a mailing list um, in between the meetings. Um, face-to-face meetings or, um, or, you know, face-to-face or virtual meetings are generally uh, focused on solving key issues. So a lot of what you'll see this week or, or in two weeks will be um, a document being discussed and then the key things, um, you know, the key issues that are still stumbling blocks is what will be discussed, not like an overview of the whole document itself. Um, we do have um, working groups can also have virtual interim meetings that will not be during the weeks. And so, for example, in, uh, in a working group I'm involved in, you know, they probably meet once or twice between every full IDTF meeting and a virtual standalone meeting. Um, and you can find a list of all of the virtual meetings that are coming up um, on the main IETF webpage under meetings. Uh, a working group will have a charter which has milestones and it's been negotiated with the area director and approved by the IESG. Um, so the birds of a feather sessions, there's another slide later on that specifically talks about bringing new work to the IETF, but generally a birds of a feather session, um, <coughs> excuse me, precedes the formation of a working group. Uh, and it usually uh, has, uh, it's usually focused on questions around scope and focus of a charter uh, and whether or not there is enough critical mass within the IETF to pursue uh, a new work item. Occasionally, there will be uh, birds of a feather sessions for topics that are not planning to become a working group. They're just, uh, you know, it's, it's a topic that's of general interest to the IETF or it's a one-time discussion. Um, there is a process for uh, applying to have uh, a, a working group declared as a BOF, uh, and you submit uh, a, a, a write-up for your BOF, uh, and then the IESG uh, uh, reviews all of them and uh, approves them or not. Um, and you can request, um, if you're interested in bringing new work, you can actually request uh, help in, in shepherding a boss through the process and, and somebody will be assigned to help you do that. So we already talked a little bit about the fact that we have the working groups for the IETF and then we have the research groups for the re IRTF. Um, the IRTF is officially an activity of the IAB um, and they uh, are generally, as I've indicated, they're more research topics versus actual engineering topics. Um, all IRTF meetings at an IETF are open meetings. Um, and this RFC 7418 uh, talks a great deal about, um, uh, more about the IRTF. Um, so I, we talked here, here about um, area-wide sessions, plenaries, and invited lunch talks. Um, I think if you're interested in, um, topics that go across the area, you want to look for the area meetings. So for example, the security area advisory group meets usually on the Thursday of the meeting. Uh, and it has topics that are of general interest to security. Um, sometimes an area will have um, like the transport area working group and then they'll have a transport area meeting. So part of the meeting will be, you know, specific work items that have been accepted for the uh, work, uh, for the working group, for the transport area working group, uh, and then it'll have general topics. Um, we have two types of plenaries and sometimes they can occur together uh, and sometimes uh, not at all. Every IETF will have an administrative plenary uh, and this is where we go through the basically the business of the IETF. And so they'll talk about the budget, they'll talk about upcoming meetings. Um, and uh, it's also a chance for the IETF community to ask questions of all of the IETF leadership bodies. Um, there can also be a technical plenary. Um, these are generally organized by the IAB um, on technical topics that are of general interest to the IETF. Um, there may or may not be a technical plenary for any specific given IETF, it just depends. 
Um, in the virtual world, we haven't done the invited lunch talks as much as we have in, uh, in, yeah, for physical meetings. Um, a lot of times if we have a, for example, a sponsor, um, and they might offer a uh, high level technical speaker and that'll provide a, a, a technical talk. Um, so hackathons and code sprints. Uh, ha hackathon is, has grown into a, a large activity, uh, generally uh, the weekend before the IETF at a physical meeting uh, where any group that a uh, group of people that are interested in working on a project uh, might work together on it. Uh, code sprints is really basically the same thing as a hackathon, except it is specifically looked at, looking at the development of the tools that the IHF uses. So this is um, a, a volunteer team that gets together and develops things like tools.ietf.org and data tracker and things like that. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the hackathon. Um, so the hackathon is free and open to anybody to participate, uh, whether you're registered for the IETF or not. Um, and it's, it's intended to be collaborative and working towards shared goals. Um, and uh, part of what it's trying to do is get the IETF a little bit back to its roots on um, you know, rough consensus and running code and sort of reemphasizing the running code piece of it. Um, some of this might be, uh, you know, somebody who has a new idea for something that might eventually become a standard and they will propose a project and people will work on that and then they can decide whether it's something that's worth pursuing in the IETF or not. Uh, it might also be a working group that's currently working on a solution to something and they can use the hackathon as a uh, sort of a feedback mechanism into the specification um, so that you, you know, you do some implementation work during the hackathon, you figure out where the holes are in the specification, and then you feed that back into the working group and the working group improves the, the document. Um, or you, you know, thought you had a solution correct and then you tried to implement it and you realized that you, know, you overlooked something and then you can update your, that. So it helps uh, improve the quality of the standards that are coming out and it also helps keep uh, the, mo the uh, momentum going and getting a standard through the process. Um, it's one of the biggest areas where we see a lot of newcomers coming in. Um, you know, generally speaking, the percentage of people at a hackathon that are newcomers is going to be higher than uh, the percentage of people in, in a regular IETF meeting that are newcomers. Um, there's additional information available about hackathons um, at this link. Um, and uh, obviously the, the hackathon next week will, will be a, uh, online only. Um, so then there's uh, networking and social events. Um, so we don't really have social events in the, in the same way in, the, in a virtual meeting as we do in a physical meeting. We do have a, a social platform uh, that is, uh, provides a little bit, a, a virtual version of you know, what is often called the hallway track. Um, and Rich will talk a little bit more about that in the next section. Um, using a tool called uh, gather.town. And it, this gives you uh, uh, an opportunity for more casual interactions. It will also be the tool that we'll be using for the newcomers uh, quick connections if you decide to come to that. Um, and uh, it, it basically, you know, if you get within a small radius um, of people, then that set of people will be on, uh, can, can interact you know, with audio and video. Uh, and then you can move away and join another group and connect to that group. Um, in addition to uh, like general social events, there's also groups of people. And, and the picture on the right is actually an, uh, an informal organization called Sisters, which is uh, uh, for uh, to help develop, the, help provide connectivity and networking for the uh, women in the IETF. And so uh, generally, uh, we get together and have a lunch um, one day during an IETF meeting. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about general meeting etiquette. Um, as I mentioned before, working groups are generally, when you, when you come to an IETF meeting and you step into a working group for the first time, you're, you're stepping into work that's already been um, in progress for a while. 
Uh, and so one of the first things that you really need to do uh, is to sort of read the documents of interest before the working group session. Um, so this will give you a chance of, of understanding and participating in the conversations uh, uh, better. Um, as always, uh, behave respectfully and tolerantly towards all participants. Um, talk and listen to people and enjoy yourself. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how remembering to sleep applies in this world, but in this uh, virtual environment, but um, there you have it. So for the online version, um, I think we're, we're all what seven or eight months into uh, participating in virtual meetings. So I think we, we've pretty much got this down at this point. Uh, but you want to practice good online meeting practices. Uh, you know, test your configuration in advance. The IETF does use, um, I mean, we're using Zoom tonight, but um, we do use a custom tool. So uh, there's a lot of materials available to help you make sure that you can uh, uh, use that tool um, effectively. Um, uh, keep yourself muted and the video off, uh, except when speaking. Uh, it, it helps if you use a headset and always uh, speak slowly, uh, clearly, and be concise. Um, technical comments and questions are always welcome, provided you've done your homework. Um, there is also a working group Jabber channel, and Rich will talk a little bit more about that in the tools session. Uh, so finally, in this section, um, you know, a lot of times newcomers are coming into the IETF and they're particularly interested in bringing new work in. Uh, and so there's some real basic steps uh, that will help you be more successful at that. Uh, one is to, um, you need to find some collaborators that have a similar interest because one of the keys to being successful in the IETF is to have something that has support from multiple uh, constituencies. Um, write some initial drafts, maybe have a barb off. Um, and then talk to the area directors in the relevant area. Uh, some, <clears throat> some area areas have um, a working group called a dispatch working group. Uh, and this is a working group uh, that basically looks at all sorts of incoming proposals and then does a really quick, you know, is this of interest to the area? And if so, what should we do with it? You know, does it belong in this working group? Should we suggest a new working group be spun up? Um, and, uh, and then hold a boff. I see a question in there about what is a bar boff. Um, a bar boff is, uh, a birds is a, is a very informal gathering um, before you have any official meetings. And, and it's called a bar boff because um, historically, you know, it was kind of the, you know, there's four or five people and we're really interested in this topic. Let's meet down at the bar at seven and discuss it. Uh, so it, it's, it's become a term that basically means a really informal meeting. Um, and so it, it can be one of those informal side meetings that you schedule with the wiki, um, or it could be, um, you know, it, it's, it's not going to have official agenda time, um, but it's any way that you find to gather collaborators together uh, to uh, explore your, your uh, idea. Um, and if you think of in terms of, you know, you often hear stories of early internet technology and, and you know, a couple of folks sitting in a bar with a napkin and, and drawing up a design for a new protocol. And that's, that's the, the uh, idea behind a bar boff. Um, great. Uh, so hold the boff, uh, consent, and then consensus will determine what happens as a result of the boff. Uh, there is a, a whole tutorial on bringing new work to the IETF, and here's the slides and the video for that tutorial. Uh, so now we're at the third section. I, I think we're pretty caught up on questions. So Rich, uh, I'm going to hand it back to you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, some of the key people and roles that are involved. Uh, just some general information <laughs> and tooling that, pardon me, that we haven't uh, already covered. So next slide, please. So uh, the first group of people is obviously us, those of us who are participating. That would be all of you folks out there, Karen and me, and thousands of others. Um, a typical IETF in person will have 
you know, a thousand people in a hotel, a thousand plus people in a hotel for a week. Um, the online tend to have several hundred because people tend to drop in and out for just the meetings that they, you know, they want to know. Um, as Karen said, the people are, you know, you, you, when you come to a meeting, um, these are the people who've been working on it between meetings. Um, so they're passionate, they're, they're vocal, um, they can be obnoxious, but that's cause, you know, looking at the bottom right one, we've known each other for a long time and we're also very friendly. Um, nobody's caught up on roles and titles. Everybody represents themselves as an individual. Um, so on the next slide, I'll talk about some of the resources, but the key thing is if you know your stuff, if you know the technology, or you're willing to learn, you just sit back and watch for a while, that's it, you're part of the group, don't worry about it. Um, people dress comfortably, um, but you know, business casual or sometimes less, but you know, they dress, we talk to each other frankly and openly um, and socializing is, is a big part of it, which obviously takes a hit during uh, these times. Uh, next slide, please. So um, <clears throat> looking, you know, we said the, the organization is, you know, bottom up directed in terms of the, the work items are determined by the people who want to work on them. Um, either there's a working group for it or there is a birds of a feather both for informal first gatherings to, to do it. Um, and then the, the layers above uh, the working group chairs Every working group has one or two, sometimes three chairs whose job is to keep the process flowing. They're not there to act um, as the ultimate technical resources for the working group. If a working group chair wants to say something, they'll sort of say, okay, speaking as an individual or the common phrase it uses with no hats, meaning I take off the hat that says I'm a chair um, and now I'm speaking as an individual, I think we should do this. Um, working groups are organized, as I showed earlier, into areas. Um, so the area directors will typically attend, will, unless there's a conflict, attend the working groups that they're responsible for. Um, and then there's the general IETF chair, currently Alyssa Cooper, uh, 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 employee of Cisco. Um, and if you have a problem, and you don't think that the process is being followed or you think that you're not getting proper recognition for something that you've contributed or that people aren't listening to you, um, start with the working group chairs. If the working group chairs are you know, not going well, speak to the area director and ultimately you could speak to Alyssa. Um, we wanna stop it as low on the totem, you know, as low on the process as possible. Um, Next slide, please. Jay is the, you know, he, we're a volunteer organization. Jay is a paid employee professional who handles survey tabulation, negotiating with hotels, negotiating with contractors who do the tooling and so on. All around nice guy, um, even if he's from, you know, New Zealand. Um, Okay, next slide, please. And I'm just joking, I just like them. The secretariat, these people, uh, mostly women, um, you can see them here, at, like at the beginning of the week, they're all in blue. On Friday, when the thing ends, they're all wearing Hawaiian shirts. Um, they handle the registration, they handle meeting conflicts, they handle, they run some of the IESG meetings, for example. They run some of the other meetings, such as um, they take the minutes, for example, when we were having the Karen and I were meeting with Secretariat and some of the other people to plan the newcomers events. These folks take minutes, keep it all on track. Um, they're great. Next slide. Uh, the RFC editor and the INS staff. So um, the RFC editor also called the RPC, RFC Production Center. Um, they edit, they do the final copy editing on the documents, make sure everything is clear, all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, um, that the graphics translate if there's any, and that the references to other RFCs are all handled. So if we say an RFC, this RFC obsoletes that one, then they go back and change it so that 
The old one says obsolete to buy the new one. Um, they're great. IANA, uh, many RFCs have spaces in them for expansion, let's call it, where, <clears throat> um, for example, DNS will say, here's a query, and you might know A or quad A, four A's, is a general address lookup. Then there's a kind of, I want to look up the host that's responsible for the mail. And there's a collection of those kinds of things where there's holes in the protocol that other fields could be filled in later. That's a lot of that is IANA, the Internet Assigned Network uh, Numbers Authority. Um, the fact that HTTP is on port 80 and HTTPS is on port, port 443, those records are maintained by IANA. The best thing about them when we meet face to face is, as you can see on the tables here, they have lots of candy, so you can grab a quick snack. Also, very friendly people, and they work for the most part with the same they're the same organization that runs the Secretariat. Um, next slide: the Ombuds team. If something goes wrong on a personal level, as opposed to like a process or a technical level. Um, we don't, we don't tolerate harassment or harassment. Um, we don't allow it, we dislike it, and we will, you know, tell people, remove people from mailing lists and so on if they are doing these kinds of things. Um, these three people, uh, Allison, Pete, and Melinda, Pete is obviously the one in the middle. Um, we have an anti-harassment policy, and if you feel that you're being harassed, or if you notice that someone is writing really objectionable material to you personally, um, contact them. Uh, there's an ROC for it. You can contact these people. You can look them up in the data tracker um, and find their addresses and so on. Uh, we hope it doesn't happen. The in number of incidents where this happens is very, very small, but we wanna make sure that we're really you know, welcoming and open to all without fear. Uh, next slide. So new, newcomers resources, um, the DAO of the IETF. This is an old historic document. It was just recently refreshed um, by I think Niels uh, that explains the way the IETF and is full of, you know, not too many Zen cones, but things like rough consensus and running code and so on. It's a fairly short read, it's good. Uh, I think you've seen the newcomers page about three times so far, plus you've all gotten in mail. Um, Karen mentioned in the past, we've had technical tutorials. This tutorial will show up in video at some point. Uh, it's being recorded and uploaded to YouTube later on. Um, so you can see that the other tutorials are available. And for the most part, many of them are still applicable and interesting. Uh, the service, Discovering services through DNS tricks was done by Apple. It's very cool. Uh, next slide. So more meeting resources. Uh, there is a first time attendees mailing list. Um, that's the page to the archive and the list. Feel free to join it. Um, the sisters group for, for women or those who present as women, um, a socially oriented thing, but also designed to be a welcoming space for, you know, to help uh, a, a welcoming space for women, leave it at that. There are many meeting lists, uh, many mailing lists about meetings, um, social lists, travel companions, that tends to not be that important in these virtual days. Um, but when we meet face to face, there'll often be things like, hey, anybody, you know, I'm landing at 6 p.m. on Friday night, anybody want to share a cab to the hotel? That kind of discussion. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, the data tracker. So that's named there in the upper left and the picture screenshot is in the right. Um, also known as DT, so abbreviated dt.ietf.org. Um, this has pages for, this handles the workflow and the document storage for our, for the IETF. Um, so you see on the right here, uh, the TLS working group. Um, there's tabs for about, that would be the general discussion. Um, documents, this is the drafts that are currently being worked, what the status is. Um, 
when we meet and what the minutes are and the slides are and so on, um, history of various other documents. Um, and <clears throat> if you, the list archive is the not unintuitively named one that gets you to the mailing list. Um, the most important URL construct is dt.ietef.org slash wg slash and then the working group abbreviation TLS slash WG slash NTP and so on. The tools page has a bunch of links and tools and text um, for helping uh, produce drafts, document them, produce drafts, sorry, format them and so on. Um, you won't need that at, for, at the start, um, but the data tracker is definitely a way to start up. You can say, oh, I'm interested in this group and um, when you look at the agenda, there'll be a link for every working group that points to its data tracker page. Uh, next slide. Meet Echo. Um, this is our, the tool, the video tool that we use <coughs> um, for remote participation. Um, when we meet in person, it starts with they have video cameras set up in the back of the room and mics and that stuff is broadcast over the internet in real time. Um, there's also recordings made. Uh, it has the messaging system, Jabber, or known as XMPP, built in. Um, it has the ability to handle people who were presenting remotely. Um, obviously, we all are now, so it's, you know. Um, these are the four folks who have, you know, have our key in it. Um, Tobiah is, <laughs> the guy Karen and I have spent the most time with because he generally handles all of the, the newcomers webinars. Um, since this is a newcomers session, um, we made the decision to switch to Zoom because we figured people, newcomers are probably more familiar with that than the IETF tool. There are practice sessions available um, and there's a session participant guide which shows how to use the tool. Um, there is, I mentioned humming, and there's a way for you to click on a button when the chairs are doing a hum and what will come out <clears throat> based on uh, how people clicked is there'll be, you know, pianissimo all the way up to sforzando, right? Those happen to be the Italian musical terms for soft and loud and it will help. Uh, so it's kind of cute that way. Uh, next page, Gather Town. So this is uh, where we have our virtual hallway it's a startup that has done some things to make it more flexible for us. You can see on the left, um, here's where meeting rooms are. Um, it's kind of, you know, I think of it as the IETF Animal Crossing. Um, when you get two people together, videos of the people participating show up at the top and you can talk and you can hear and it's next best thing to being there. Um, the newcomers tutorial, the newcomers a meet and greet will happen in here. Um, you'll see email coming from the ITF either to the all participants and also the newcomers mailing list um, about you know what the links are and how to join. You know, gather.town slash something or other. I don't know. Um, but I was impressed. It's more fun than I thought. Yeah. Next slide. <laughs> um, not as good as Animal Crossing, but still good. Uh, so we use. XMPP, uh, there's an RFC about, it, describes it. It is an instant messaging protocol. We're trying to figure out what to do. We'll have experiments up that use other things like Slack or um, Zulip or I forget what the third one is. <coughs> so there'll be email about that. Um, but, pardon me. Um, yeah, so watch, watch email for those things. Uh, next slide, above all else, have a good time. Um, I know almost all the people in these pictures by now. This was a, the middle one with the fireworks was pretty impressive. That was in Prague um, where they did a really impressive um, social event that had fireworks, which is cool. Um, okay, so we're just about out of time. In fact, we're just about to go over. Um, we have a survey. Um, or you can click on the QR code there on the right. Uh, if you have other questions, you can come to the next webinar. Um, 
otherwise email the edu-team at itf.org. Um, and thank you for your time. And if there's any last minute questions, we can stay for a minute or two. Otherwise we'll end more or less on time. Yes, uh, thank you everybody for coming. And uh, uh, yes, the, the next webinar will be the same topics. It's the same presentation actually. So we, right. we do it at two different times to accommodate people in different time zones. Yeah. Um, there will also be um, a Slack channel uh, and we will add that. It's not currently in the documentation, but there will be a newcomers uh, channel as part of our Slack channel space. And you'll be able to ask newcomer questions there during the week. Okay, well, thank you very much right. and uh, hope to see you around online uh, in a couple of weeks. Ah, and uh, thank you very much for attending. Everybody have a good night. <laughs>